Good evening, everybody, and welcome into ESPN Plus as we got a good game for you coming your way here from the No Room for Racism Classic in Rock Hill, South Carolina. I'm Mike Glennon alongside Brock Bowling. And Brock, first off, welcome to the broadcast and should be in for a pretty fun night tonight. Two teams that don't necessarily meet very often, but at the same time should be a lot of fun. Should be a lot of fun and high point coming off a couple of big wins, including one against Elon last weekend. And how about South Carolina State, a new coach? Already twice as many wins this year compared to a year ago, just one in 17 last year. Already two wins this year in the uh, new era of the Tony Madlock era. Should be a good ball game here tonight. And you mentioned it coming off a big win the last time out against USF and a buzzer beater win as T.J. Madlock sunk it in with .6 seconds left to go to lift this South Carolina State team over the USF Bulls. And then you mentioned it, High Point coming off a, uh, a win against Guilford that I don't necessarily think they knew was going to be that close. Yeah, it wasn't going to be that close. I talked to Tubby Smith before the game. I asked him what he liked best about this club. He says this team is starting to play a little bit more together. And it has a little bit more depth this week. A couple of guys were sick uh, last week, and uh, he expects his team to come out on fire tonight and to come out hungry, be aggressive, and try and get a good win tonight against South Carolina State. Well, he's got an absolute stud over there, junior guard John Michael Wright out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Came in leading the team scoring here this season with just about 21 points a game. He's got just over five rebounds a game as well. He did lead the team last year in scoring to John Michael Wright, so a, a bit of an encore act for him here in 2021. But he's got some good guys behind him and a lot of good rebounders behind him as well. He's got Zach Austin, a 6'5", registered freshman teammate. He is the reigning Big South Conference freshman of the week. Mike, he averaged, averaged last week 17 points, four blocks, two steals per game. That's an average game for him, supposedly. <laughs> uh, he is just a great addition for this team. Did not play last year. He was a redshirt. Uh, but he's averaging 14 points and seven rebounds a game. A good uh, Robin to Batman of John Michael Wright. Exactly, and you mentioned it. Uh, stuff in the staff sheet, if you will. And meanwhile, on the other side, for South Carolina State, you mentioned it, Tony Madlock's first season since coming over. He's been under the last two years of his former college teammate in Penny Hardaway out there in Memphis, but he got the head coaching gig here at South Carolina State, and he's got some good players. He inherited some good players, but he brought some good ones with him as well. He uh, comes here with a lot of head uh, assistant coaching experience, like you said. He played or he coached under uh, Penny Hardaway at Memphis the last three years. 25 years, Mike, uh, as a college assistant coach at places like Ole Miss, Auburn, UTEP, Arkansas State. I have a feeling he probably took good notes from his mentors at those schools. And you mentioned one of his players, Cameron Jones, 6'6", redshirt sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee, comes in averaging 11 points a game. He's been struggling shooting from the field and from three, but it's still early in the season. But this guy, Cameron Jones, number one for South Carolina State, he's the go-to guy, the leading scorer for this team. Well, looking back at high point, Tubby Smith in his fourth season, you mentioned you talked to him before the game, comes in here with 636 wins, seven different Division I stops, and one of just a few coaches that has ever brought five-plus schools to an NCAA tournament. A guy that if uh, high point wants to make the NCAA tournament, they have the right guy at the helm. Mike, how in the world is this guy not in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame yet? I mean, one of only three NCAA Division I coaches to take five schools to the NCAA tournament, Tulsa, Georgia, Kentucky, Minnesota, and Texas Tech. The other two coaches to do that, to take five schools to the big dance, Lon Kruger, who just retired, and Rick Pitino still going strong at Iona. And this is a guy, he is flat out one, Coach Smith, he is flat out one at every stop he's been to. The guy knows how to win games over 600 times. He's got a W under his belt in his career trying for another one here tonight. National Coach of the Year three times, Conference Coach of the Year six times, and of course honored with the John R. W. I mean John John R. Wooden, excuse me, Legends of Coaching Award back in 2016, nine Sweet Sixteens, four Elite Eights, and of course that 98 National Championship. And you know it's funny these two teams bet back in that year, but it was I should say uh, Tubby Smith took down South Carolina State in that season. My apologies. And, uh, but always nice when a coach comes back to their alma mater, right? Ball is up, and we are underway here in Rock Hill as a part of the No Room for Racism Classic. Glad to have you along with us. Mike Lennon joined by Brock Bowling. 
as High Point wins the tip, and they'll take over on offense first, so we'll be able to see John Michael Wright, who had the ball in his hand there for a moment. He's got another guard out there in Jaden House that works out well with him, but he comes off the bench. Three ball coming from Austin, too short. As that ball rebound here by the Bulldogs, and they'll look to push. And the Bulldogs opened up in man-to-man, -man, and now we see High Point doing the same, opening up man-to-man -man defense. Look for both teams to maybe switch up Ds later on in this game. Taking it in right side. T.J. Madlock will take it in on that right side, get fouled. And he will go to the line for two, so we'll have our first foul of the day. And T.J. Madlock, we mentioned, hit that buzzer beater to win against USF. A couple of, I mean, last game out. Now, they haven't played since the third, so it's been a full week for these guys getting out there to actually play. Meanwhile, high point coming off a game just the other night. First free throw rims out there for Madlock Jr. Yeah, the foul's on uh, Brian, uh, Bryant Randleman. His first just uh, slid over a little bit too late. Fouled T.J. Madlock, and uh, he goes 0 for 2 at the stripe. Rebound down there for high point, so they'll look to push back the right direction. Into the corner it goes to Peterson the third. Peterson the third, his father Buzz, the assistant GM of the Hornets. So almost a home game for him. Nice little lay in that side by Izunabor. Emmanuel Izunabor, that is another guy out of Fayetteville. Went to Fayetteville Academy with John Michael Wright and won a state championship. TJ Madlock looking to force the issue down in that lane. Right hand no good. And down comes High Point back the other way. High Point, a team that will spread you out. They do like to shoot the three. Both teams have had ups and downs shooting the three so far here this season. But just about 37.5% from three are the High Point Panthers. John Michael Wright sealed off for a minute, but man, so elusive. A little turnaround in the lane that time. Good for John Michael Wright. That's one thing he can do, Mike. He can create his own shot and gets on the board for the first time tonight. And this is a high point team. When you play for Coach Tubby Smith, you're going to run good offense. They move the ball so well from the second side to the third side. And uh, John Michael Wright able to create his own shot and give high point a four-point lead. 18-20 left to go here in the first half. And if you're just joining us, this is just the third all-time meeting between these two squads. One and one all-time. They haven't met since 2009. So a lot of these guys, I should say all these guys, still in grade school at that point. But uh, So the history, I guess, might be a little lost on them. However, of course, Tubby Smith back at his alma mater here. What an unbelievable career he had as a player at High Point College back when it was High Point College. But now he's back here as a head coach. But you mentioned Tony Madlock here, his first head coaching. He was interim for one year, but this is his first legitimate head coaching job since coming 25-plus years as an assistant. Yeah, he had to have taken some good notes from his mentors before taking over this job at South Carolina State. John Michael Wright, 44% from three-point range here this season, misses off the front iron with that one as the Bulldogs of South Carolina State go back the other way. Beautiful pump fake, freebie in the lane, but just can't get it to rattle home. Good offensive board, up with the right hand, and it's good for Daquan Williams. Good job by Williams, staying with the play. The shot was missed by his teammate. Nobody boxed him out, able to get the rebound, and an easy deuce. And one thing you'll notice about the roster of this South Carolina State team, Brock, is they have a lot of transfers, a lot of guys coming in to play for Coach Madlock here in his first season as a Bulldogs coach. Yeah, what team nowadays with the uh, transfer portal does not have a lot of new players? I can't keep <laughs> up with even my favorite teams. I can't keep up with who's on what team, who's gone, who stays. It's, uh, it's uh, something we're all having to get used to, but it was going to be – a day coming one of these days, and it's coming right now. The transfer portal, everyone going to play immediately once they transfer away from the school. And beautiful defense there on the inbound for South Carolina State. They force the five-second underneath the basket of high point. That always a no-no, and Coach Smith a little frustrated with that one. So South Carolina State up by two. They are the home team, as we are indeed in South Carolina here in Rock Hill at the beautiful Rock Hill Sports and Events Center. This is the first big tournament being held here. Just opened up this year. Was here a couple of weeks ago doing some volleyball, but it is a beautiful arena. Small, but intimate, and maybe a little more intimate than these teams are used to. As a twisted ankle that time there by Randleman. Official blew the whistle, so. I think you have a, a shot clock situation. Uh, They're going to set it to 20. It happens from time to time. The uh, clock operator a little slow on the trigger. So they now, now they set it up to 23. So 23 on the shot clock, 16.56.
That's the other thing to keep an eye out for, folks. It is a smaller gym, so on breakout layups, they're going to have to pull up pretty quick because it is just crowds right as you get to the end of the floor here in the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center. John Michael Wright puts it on the deck, drives in, absorbs the contact, fade away, no good. Offensive board was there, bounced up off, and it stays here with high point. So they'll reset it offensively. Just three seconds, though, on the shot clock. They're going to have to go. They'll get the shot off. No, they will wave it off in a shot clock violation. Back-to-back -back good defensive stance for South Carolina State. That's one thing you got to do. Pay attention to the clock. Uh, high point forgot about how deep the shot clock was in on that possession. And a shot that just didn't leave the hand just enough in time. Turnover on high point. Two turnovers apiece on these two teams. 16 and a half left to play here in the first half. Four to two in favor of the South Carolina State Bulldogs. Three ball coming, and that'll be buried by Rayshon Edwards. That's only his fourth made three on the season. He's now four of 11, just shy of 40% for the year. Handoff now out up top for high point. Down to the right side goes Peterson. Peterson looked to feed it into the big man in Izunabor. Zunabor gets his pocket picked, but the foul's gonna get called against TJ Madlock in front of his team, and that should lead us to our first media timeout here on ESPN+. 5-4 is the game in favor of the South Carolina State Bulldogs. Make sure you come back and join us. We're back right after this here on ESPN+. The hype is real. The hope is valid. Welcome to a new time. It's a father-son affair at South Carolina State with the Mad Lux working together between Coach Tony and his son TJ. And you can expect Coach Tony um, Madlock to be up and down the sidelines, cheer, talking to his team and communication. The big thing he's saying is active on defense. With already one shot, shot clock violation by High Point and a five, um, a five second violation as well. He's, they're doing a good job of producing on defense and they only expect them to do even more hard work right on defense, even especially when they're not making points. Second free throw good there for Izunabor. We, of course, thank Cadby and Cardi for joining us the first time. If you know that last name, it's because her father, Paul, is, of course, the ESPN recruiting coordinator for ESPN. And we, of course, thank Cat for joining us here on the broadcast tonight. 0 for 2 on the, I mean, should say 1 for 2 on the free throws there for Izunabor. Deep ball coming and buried for Cameron Jones. First time we've called his name. But it's funny, you know, he is the team leading scorer. Unfortunately, though, for him, every time he's led the team in scoring, they've fallen by the wayside here this season. Yeah, he needs some help because there's a traveling violation on High Point. Uh, third turnover by High Point. Yeah, Cameron Jones, he's a guy he can create his own shot. He has good quickness, good lateral movement on defense. He averages 11 points a game. He's been struggling shooting the basketball from the field so far this year from a statistical standpoint. But if he gets some guys to help him out and balance out this scoring offense for South Carolina State, this can be a decent team. South Carolina State has the ball right now. As Edwards looking to feed it down underneath, nothing there. He's trying to find Daquan Williams, so he'll switch it back to TJ Madlock. Cameron Jones, an off-balance shot that time. Fades it back as it's tipped back out along the perimeter. Now Madlock drives in, lost the dribble, had the space he wanted, but just wasn't able to keep it. It's now Cameron Jones, effortless down the lane, but cannot get it to fall for point-blank range. How fast was that first step? He's explosive once he puts it on the floor. Got to stay in front of him. You can't get behind him. He'll make you pay. He just missed the shot as High Point got lucky on that last play. And just kind of glided in through the lane down the right side that time. So John Michael Wright, a little hesitation step of his own. will swing it around the perimeter. Three out, two in here for this High Point offense. John Michael Wright will pull it up from the right side, and he'll bury one home. He's another guy that can create. He averages 20 points a game. That's his fourth point of the night. Good offensive player. No rest for the weary, though, as a pull-up right back the other way is Rayson Edwards out of Charleston, West Virginia. Already got five here so far in the ballgame. And his team on top right now, 10-7 to in the early going with 14.06 left to go here in the first half. We, of course, thank you for joining us here on ESPN+. Plus. We'll keep you up to date on the score time and all that kind of good stuff throughout this first half. Nothing called there on the contact. Back the other way come the Bulldogs. 
Edwards passes in one extra pass. T.J. Madlock, though, just can't get it to fall. Luckily for him, though, that ball, I don't think, was expected to go past the rim, and it kind of clicked around off Zach Austin and out of play. Yeah, he had a good shot, but he could have driven to the basket. He, no one was on the baseline. He got kind of three-shot happy, three-point shot happy, and uh, shot that ball a little bit too quickly. I think he could have driven to the paint instead. A break as it went out of bounds off a high point. Stays with the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. Cat had told us, T.J. Madlock, of course, a coach's son, but a guy that can back it up. Just a freshman is T.J. Out of Memphis, of course, went to Houston High School there. Second on the team right now in scoring with just under 10 a game. Off-balance shot. It will go out of play as they'll say that ball was blocked in some way, shape, or form. And for South Carolina State, Mike, keep an eye on the guy in the goggles, number 14, Edward Oliver Hampton, transfer from Hampton University. This guy is a guy that can really disrupt things on defense. He's long. He's lanky. He can defend positions one through five. Good transfer pickup for Tony Madlock and the South Carolina State team. You mentioned it's 6'8", 195. They do have a seven-footer on the roster in Dallas James, just a freshman, though, so... Hasn't played a ton of minutes just yet, and now it looks like they will have a conference and actually do give it back to high point as it went off the side of the backboard, I believe, is what they're going to call. So high point will inbound the ball. Some full court pressure here from Coach Madlock, and Cat alluded to it. A lot of defensive pressure here in the first about seven minutes of the game. And yeah, this is a high point team that was the preseason sixth place team in the Big South North Division, that surprises me. That's last place in that division in the Big South. I was expecting the preseason rank to be a little higher for this season, but the voters said no, sixth place. Finished 9-15 and 15 last season, 6-11 and 11 in conference play. That was eighth. Of course, now with the divisions here this season, back the other way, here comes, Buck, here comes the Bulldogs, I should say. As Madlock will pull one up and just rims around and out. He's no stranger, though. He'll put the ball up, that's for sure. Out up top. Deep one coming. And it's in. Beautiful shot from Zach Austin straight away. 6'5", 201 forward, but has no problem there. Didn't play last year. This is really his first year as a collegiate player. Yeah, he's been chomping at the bit to play this year. The Big South freshman of the week this week averaged 17 points, four blocks, and two steals in a game in the past two wins this past week for the High Point Panthers. A couple of substitutions here for the South Carolina State Bulldogs. Cameron Jones entering back into the game. And Rakeem Gary. The guy coming in that leads the team in three-point percentage and made threes, so they bring in a deep ball threat here, tied at 10 with 12.36 to go. As they tried a little lob in, didn't get it, but still winds its way in. Speaking of Gary, he'll pull it too long. Got a little jittery out of the gate that time. Quickly back the other way comes Randleman. Austin takes one step into it. Gets the home roll here on the road, if you will. Of course, a neutral court location here. But uh, I guess sort of in the backyard of South Carolina. State. He was so wide open. You got to keep a player on him and make him honest from outside. He's shooting 34% from downtown. Nobody near him on that last play. Now, we talked about it. You know, a guy that can definitely help this high point team stretch the floor and be able to really make this South Carolina State team think about it in terms of how they're going to defend this ball, especially with the pressure defense they've been playing. I'll tell you what, I've seen. South Carolina State played before, saw them once last year. This team was 1-17 uh, last year, 1-7 in, in conference play. Uh, head coaching change was made, and so far this team looks light years better than what I saw in them a year ago in, in uh, November of last year. This year's team, a new coach, a new voice, new leadership, a new style of play, and so far I'm liking what I see in the Bulldogs. Now, the first five games of the season was a bit rough. ECU, College of Charleston, Loyola University at Georgia. But that win against St. Andrews helped them kind of turn it around a bit. As they won 82, I mean, they lost 82-78 to USC Upstate. Went on the road to the Citadel, lost by 12. And then coming off that buzzer beater win against USF. Had a week to think about this game, though, here taking on Tubby Smith's high point team. And you'll see the pressure defense and a steal. Rakeem Gary gets it, dunks it home. On the other side, does Jamel Davis just checked in. Another one of the freshmen for this South Carolina State team out of the Virgin Islands making a statement here early, early going. 
So Peterson, the third, will be the one that brings it up. We mentioned his father, Buzz, the assistant general manager of the Charlotte Hornets. He was on that 82 uh, Carolina championship team. Sorry to take that out of your mind. He was also Michael Jordan's roommate when they were freshmen at UNC. Man, you want to talk about having stories, right? (laughs) I'm sure. Rakeem Gary with a good one-handed board there. They'll give it back. Right hand again. Jamel Davis just took it into the chest of Peterson the third. It's like we they heard him talking about him. And so he goes right into it. A good little floater up and off the glass. 11-10 left to go here in the first half. 16-13 in favor of South Carolina State. Izunabor trying to clear room. Can't get it. Somehow high point holds on to it. A baseline jumper no good. Peterson trying for the tap. He's ran into the back, and it will be, I believe, on Jamel Davis. No, excuse me. It'll be on Raquan Brown of the Bulldogs. That'll take us to another media timeout. At the second media timeout with 10.55 left to go here in the first half, South Carolina State leading here in Rock Hill. 16-13 is the score. We're back after this here on ESPN+. Plus. Rated R. Only in theaters. Tickets on sale now. Thank you, Cat, once again. And Cat and Cardi, our sideline reporter for the evening. We appreciate your insight there, but they are getting pressure. That's for sure, Brock. His first one goes in there for Peterson. But I think this is going to be where it counts. You know, both teams have definitely left something to be desired from the free throw line. 68.5% for South Carolina State through the first nine. 63% for the other side in high point, but two of two there at the line for Peterson. That's going to be big in a back-and-forth game like this. Yeah, you got to make the free throws. Can't be shooting 63% in a game and expect to win all the time. you got to make shots, whether it's from the field, from the line. Knock them down. They're freebies at the free throw line. Got to get them to go down. South Carolina State with the ball. 16-15 the score. Looking to add on to it as that one rattles around. Right there for the putback is Edward Oliver Hampton. You mentioned him early, Brock. He's making you look good as he's right there for an easy offensive board. Well, nobody boxed him out. I mean, you got to get a body on him. He's too strong. He looks long and lean and lanky, but he's stronger than he looks. And nobody got a body on him. Someone barely got there at the last second, and he was able to tip it in for two for his uh, first basket of the game. He has four points immediately off the bench for this Bulldogs team. Oliver Hampton, a 6'8", 195. Oliver Hampton, a hyphenated last name. Just so you know, Oliver, not his first name. It is Edward. But back the other way, Austin Pumpfeg. Good job by Davis, though. Knowing he can shoot that three, we've seen him hit two of them so far. So they're a little bit farther out from the basket on him here. As they switch off with Cameron Jones. John Michael Wright, though, trying to get his night going a little bit more. He'll step back for a three. Right there it is. As that is what they're looking for out of John Michael Wright. 45% from three-point range showing why there. Decent defense, but a poorly executed closeout. And just enough room for John Michael Wright to knock down the three. This high point team trying to make a splash of the Big South. They will kick off Big South play after the new year. As we'll talk more about their pre their non-conference schedule here in just a moment. That ball gets tipped out of bounds. It'll stay here with South Carolina State. As Cameron Jones was going to inbound, instead it'll be T.J. Madlock checking back in. He'll take the duties underneath the hoop. Mike, I can't even begin to tell you how much more improved this Bulldogs offense looks this year compared to a year ago. 1-17 a year ago, already two wins this year. Good ball movement so far in this game against High Point. And they don't look like a team that's 2-7, and seven, that's for oh. sure. A little bit off the right side that time there for Rakeem Gary, but... That being said, you mentioned it. Out there playing with confidence. What a block by Oliver Hampton. Back the other way. A run out as Davis will hammer it home. And Jamal Davis wide open. Really can't ask for a much more of a high percentage shot than that. So now it's high points turn here to answer. Little jab step from John Michael Wright. Drives in, gets fouled as it'll be Rakeem Gary that's whistled for. You know, I alluded to the non-conference schedule. Looking at the non-conference schedule remaining here in this month of December for both teams, a lot of good competition coming up. High point going to be at home against UNCW and FAU. Then they're on the road for Michigan State, number 19, and then, of course, that big game at Kentucky. First time that Tubby Smith has been back there in over 5,400 days. That's a pretty special moment. That's going to be a fun game to watch. Yeah, he... What he did at Kentucky was amazing. He was there 10 years. His first year there, he goes to the Final Four, wins the national championship. Uh, 
Everyone thought it was going to be that easy every year for uh, Tubby and the Cats, but it's hard to get there to the Final Four, hard to win a national championship. He did it in his first year, and uh, he's won everywhere he's been. He's won at Minnesota. He's won at Texas Tech. He's won at Memphis. He's won at Georgia. He won at Tulsa. He's just wherever he goes, he wins. He has indeed done that, 636 of them to be exact. Deep three coming from Edwards. Rattles around. And I'm telling you, these rims here in the Rock Hill Sports and Events Center seem to pretty, be pretty soft out there for these shooters. How many times did that roll around the rim, bounce around six, seven times? Easy, nice, soft rims here in Rock Hill. Sam, pretty sure he touched the net twice before it actually went in. Now a deep three coming from right. A little bit of a heat check that time, and a foul going to be called down underneath the hoop. As I think it's going to be against Oliver Hampton. Graduate transfer out of Hampton University. Leaves the team seven rebounds a game. We'll pick up the foul there. It's on the floor, though, so an out-of-bounds play here as it's a 23-20 game. John Michael Wright's two free throws tied us at 20. And then a deep ball coming from Edwards. Rattled around and in to give us a 23-20 score. Wide open shot here for Wright, and that is something that this South Carolina State team is not going to get away with very often, but they do on that one. TJ Madlock the other way. Transition three is good. Only hitting 21% of his threes so far this season. Mike wide open, knocks it down, nothing but net. Tubby Smith has never lost to a MEAC school in his career, 6-0 all time, including 1-0 against his South Carolina State team. But they, have, they are up right now here are the Bulldogs, 26-20, looking for their third win on the season. Peterson mishandles the pass. Down to the baseline, gets caught up a little bit, gets some teammate help that time by Alex Holt. Ill-advised pass, saved in play by South Carolina State, but it goes the other direction as Oliver Hampton and Cameron Jones trying to get there. But either way, that'll send us to an immediate timeout. Seven and a half left to play here in the first half. Of this No Room for Racism Classic, we'll talk more about this tournament coming up here in just a couple of moments. We're back here on ESPN Plus right after this. The Tom Tread, sprinting and lifting sweat dripped from his head. Madlock, Tuggle, Huddle, it's, it's vocal, it's energizing, and it was funny because he said, guys, we just need you guys to run the game plan. You're switching it up. No, we're asking you to run and do exactly what we say, and things will work out well. So stick to the game plan, and don't try to change it up on yourself while you're out on the court. Thank you, Cat. Once again, a back-to-back -back three pointers, a 6-0 run here for South Carolina State. Three of their last three. Meanwhile, oh, their last four, and in fact, one of their last seven from the floor here is High Point. High Point, as a team, shooting about 44% on the season and holding opposing offenses to just about 40% of their own. Yeah, shooting just 35% right now. The three ball is keeping this team in it. As that one will find its way down for Alex Holt. Just a two-pointer that time, but either way, first field goal made in the last five tries. 26-22 with 7.17 left to go here in the first half. A pull-up three for Edwards again. Nothing but nylon over the outstretched hands there of Peterson. That is his third three of the game, Mike. High point has to get a man on him and at least get a hand in his face. Second in a row for Edwards. And he has his team with a seven-point advantage. Largest lead of the day here for either side with 6.55 left to go here in the first half. High point swings it around the perimeter, gets it to John Michael Wright. Right, left alone again for three. Still can't find it. Ball loose and just South Carolina State hustling down. Madlock Jr. the other way. Blocked away by John Michael Wright in transition defense. Stays with South Carolina State. It'll be a foul on the floor as Edwards runs into John Michael Wright. But, man, you want to talk about covering some ground. First of all, great interior defense on the other end of the court by South Carolina State. Once they got the ball, the quick outlet pass, that ball never hit the ground until the last second. And then how about the big block getting back on defense by high point? Two teams playing hard here in the last couple of possessions in this game. And both these teams looking to build on some momentum here from a couple of wins between both sides here over these last couple of weeks. It didn't start out that way this season for either team, but they're trying to find that stride. They know they got a tough non-conference schedule coming up here over the last part of this December. High point still getting taken away as it's picked right back here by High Point. 
up the other way. Gray wide open, and he'll just finish it with two hands, not wanting to get any sort of contact. Daquan Williams just kind of holds up a little bit. And without hesitation, another three. They tried to give it to John Michael Wright, but his shoe came off there, so <laughs> they give it to his teammate while he puts his shoe back on. That's the other thing about early action here in these first 15 minutes, Brock. It has been nonstop back and forth. There is no waiting on the other side offensively. Yeah, you got uh, some guys that are kind of tired, breathing heavy on this last couple of possessions, but it's because these guys are playing so hard, and here's some more good interior defense by South Carolina State. T.J. Madlock shutting it down. He'll get the travel called on John Michael Wright. I think John Michael Wright just a little bit too much on that one, trying to see if he couldn't find his way to the lane. And so the turnover will give it back to South Carolina State with that five-point lead, five and a half left to play here in the first half. And if you're South Carolina State, you need more of that. You need to disrupt John Michael Wright. Get him out of his comfort zone. Take the ball out of his hands. Make him work or make him pass the ball. Don't let John Michael Wright, a guy averaging 20 points a game, try and beat you here tonight. Well, John Michael Wright will take a seat. We'll see Childress, Bryson Childress, that is, for the first time here tonight. But now Madlock is straightaway three. Too soft was a rim that time. As high point, a quick one and done on the defensive rebound that time, and they'll bring ball back the other direction. Looking to get it to Childress. They do here on the right wing. Austin now in the corner. We'll switch it around, and that's the thing right now here for South Carolina State. That defense on the closeout is right there the second the ball carrier touches the ball. Short on a big here. Off the hands of Randleman, has to shoot it, and that'll be another shot clock violation, second of the first half here for this South Carolina State defense. I've been impressed with South Carolina State's defense so far in the game, Mike. Everyone's head is on a swivel. Good help side defense, good rotations, good closeouts on the perimeter here in the last couple of minutes against this high point offense. Well, the seven-footer. And Dallas James, number 42 for South Carolina State, checks in for the first time. Deep three coming on a transition opportunity. And it's back the other direction there as the ball tipped out of play by South Carolina State. But a seven-footer freshman and 245. I don't necessarily know if he has room to grow. But uh, at the same time, definitely, of course, a big presence out there. We'll see what he adds to it. Either way, it's high point basketball. And I'm amazed at how uh, South Carolina State has had so many open looks from three tonight, Mike. Five of 13 from three, 38% so far. High Point needs to do a good, better job of getting guys out on the perimeter, hands and faces, locking down on D. Peterson for three on the right side, still no good, as James will come down with his first rebound of the game. Back the other way come the Bulldogs. Kind of slipping up on that one was Edwards, finds its way to his teammate, T.J. Madlock. Madlock one-on-one -on -one, gets fouled on the jump shot and that one just kind of an off-balance heave that time by T.J. Madlock gets bailed out though by Bryson Childress. Yeah, Childress played great D. There's really not much you could do there. I mean, he was right on him. Great defense. Kind of got him on the wrist or the elbow at the last second. Good scrappy defense by Bryson Childress, the 5'8 sophomore. T.J. Madlock trying to end the scoring drought. It was four straight buckets for SC State, but then they ended up falling over their last four, but still no field goals here in the last 3-0-4, but a foul shot there will find its way in. 30-24 to the score with 4.09 left to go, make it 31-24, two of two at the line with T.J. Madlock. And I like the way South Carolina State mixing up its defense, sometimes pressure in the backcourt, sometimes not, trying to keep high point on its heels and keep the Panthers guessing. Taken away by Madlock the other way, but taken right back that time by Bryant Randleman, the one that surrendered it to begin with. John Michael right back the other way, trying to get going, and he finds the range from three that time. And that's a big three at this moment in the game here. Grant is still an eternity left to play, but especially for a guy that can get scoring going in a hurry. Yeah, he has 12 points. He's a guy you can't let get out of hand. He averages 20 a game. He's had almost a game here in the first half. 12 points in the first half already, Mike. And picking up a foul on that one will be Peterson the third. And that'll be the final media timeout here in the first half. 3.33 left to go. It's a four-point ball game between South Carolina State and High Point. Each team looking for their second win all time against the other and trying to uh, take the rubber match. We're back here on ESPN Plus right after this. 
Does that sound alike with everyone? Yes, go, Sergeant! Good! Being represented, high point, of course, in South Carolina State right now. Clinton versus Edward Waters tomorrow, Winthrop versus Carver, and then the nightcap on Sunday, Florida State versus South Carolina, a very cool tournament. And, of course, we thank the folks at Visit York County for helping put this on. High point. We'll see South Carolina State start with a ball and a four-point advantage here in the first half, 31-27. Davis doing work getting that offensive board, but taken away underneath by Izunabor, and it's back the other way here for the Panthers. A lot of guys slipping and falling here. There's a lot of moisture. It is, of course, humid inside this small arena. Pull-up jump shot from the free throw line. That time for John Michael Wright. He's got 14, and he's starting to get hot here in the first half. Yeah, it's too easy for him. You leave him wide open like that at the foul line. Nine times out of ten, he's going to knock it down, and that time, nothing but net. And again, it's no mystery. He's going to be the guy here for high point. And now a feed into Dallas James, somehow blocked away from the seven-footer by Zach Austin. And Zach Austin will get the reward as well if it goes off Dallas James and out of play. And now a bit of a platoon swap here for South Carolina State as they'll bring in Lawrence Gray and Williams off the bench. And I think that might be another reason for the success. Tony Madlock here in his first season, of course, still trying to figure out that rotation, but at the same time, flexing a little bit of depth here in this first half. And here's the full court press again, just trying to change up the pace, give another look to high point, but high point breaks it easily this time down the floor. First time we've seen Latavian Lawrence out of New Orleans in South Carolina with the Gray Collegiate, a very good basketball school in the state of South Carolina. Meanwhile, for high point is John Michael right again. He'll take the screen from Austin, dribbles left. Pulls up from the baseline again, just off the front. Rakeem Gary for South Carolina State will pick up the rebound and quickly move it back the other way. Good pick up on the transition defense-wise. It's now a low block feed that time here for the Bulldogs. Goes up with the left and a foul called against Austin. Austin a little shrug of the shoulders there. Thought he was straight up and down, but instead it'll send the Bulldogs to the line for two with Daquan Williams. So the Bulldogs hanging around. Not shooting great. 11 of 28 from the field, Mike, at 39%. A high point, not much better. 10 of 24, 41%. As uh, Williams will head to the line for two shots. Williams will miss on the first. It's an 0 for 6 so far here for South Carolina State. No points in the last two minutes and five seconds for them. As Cameron Jones will check out here. He and TJ Madlock seeming to transfer in positions here throughout this game, giving breathers to one or the other. Second free throw short on that, but right there with the offensive board, blocked away underneath again by high point. So they surrender the offensive board, which of course is the cardinal sin, if you will, on a free throw. But a good job to block it away, and no harm, no foul. 31-29, a chance to tie or take the lead here for the Panthers. Fed down in, but an offensive foul going to be called on Izunabor, using his body to screen off the defender, but gets whistled for it. I'll tell you what, I didn't see much on that play. I, mean, I was looking right at... Izunabor in the lane. He was just jockeying for position. The official saw something I did not see. We're way up here. They're way down there. But it looked like a pretty clean post-up move, but instead they call him for a foul. So Jakeem Gray, Rakeem Gray, excuse me, will bring back the ball as Gary dribbles right side. Deep three coming from Lawrence on a rainbow shot. Comes short off the left side. Rebound here back the other direction for Brian Randleman. Fed low block. They are looking for Holt. Instead, it goes back to John Michael Wright. Good look. Trying for this facial on that one was Austin, but whistled for the foul. Couldn't get it to flush down. He'll go to the line for two. That was a great look by Wright. Trying to create inside, and he kind of looked off the defender. He didn't even look at Austin's way. He just looked through his peripheral vision. Didn't give the defense a heads up on where he was looking at and where he was going to pass the ball. And uh, found Austin somehow, and uh, somehow... That ball did not go in on the uh, basket attempt on the shot. And now 0 for 1 at the line, trying to go 1 for 2 here. Austin, a Winston-Salem, North Carolina native. Won a state championship with Winston-Salem Prep. Played for Team Winston 
in AAU as he will get that second free throw, but it's still a one-point lead here for South Carolina State. They're looking for a field goal here over their last eight from the floor, and that will break now as Jamal Davis comes up with the right side. Lay in that time here for the Bulldogs and finally able to break that scoreless streak out there from the field. 33-30, final minute left to go here in the first half. 50 seconds to be exact here, 15 seconds on the shot clock. Already two shot clock violations for high point on this good defense for the Bulldogs. Pull up jumper from the elbow, too short there. And a rebound here for the Bulldogs back the other way. TJ Madlock goes up and a big block, but a put back stuff comes from Aquan Williams. Almost like a pass off the block there from Zach Austin. Good defense in transition, good block initially, but you got to box out. High point failed to do at that time. Easy put back jam for the Bulldogs. Shot clock is off. As a timeout coming from high point. Coach Tubby Smith wanting to talk it over. As we'll keep it here on ESPN Plus. 18.4 seconds left to go here in this first half. 35-30 in that huddle right now, Coach. I mean, for Coach Smith. Brock, what do you think he's dialing up here? Well, he wants to dial something up uh, that's simple, that can get him a good shot, a good score here. 18.4 to go, so the shot clock is turned off. Only the game clock is in effect. I'm looking for them to maybe get an ISO play for John Michael Wright, make him create. If he has a shot, take it. If not, try and dish it off to a teammate. They might be open uh, due to the, some of those screens set up by this great high-point offense. Well, last year, John Michael Wright, we talked about he's leading the team again in points per game. Did it last year with over 20 a game. Had 48 made threes and was a 78% free throw shooter to lead the team. A season high, 29 points last year, twice against Davidson and, of course, Big South po opponent in Winthrop. Was an all-freshman team, led the team in scoring as a freshman as well. So a guy that, it's no secret, he is the man here for the High Point Panthers. And you talked about what Coach Smith is drawing up here. You know, with 600-plus career wins, I have a <laughs> feeling he has a play or two for a late game, or in this case, late half situation. He, uh, he's, he's won a couple of games in his career. I think he knows what play to call here for this team. Well, this is a high point team that came into this game shooting 49% in three of their last four games. They've won three of their last four, including two straight. And they've been shooting over 49% and over almost 50% from three point range. It's been a little bit tough to find the range here in this first half. They trail by five, but a chance to chip away in the final 17 seconds here of this first half. Shot clock is off, and they will draw the play up here out of Saab. John Michael Wright running off the ball. 2-3 zone here by South Carolina State, changing up the D. And now they'll go back the other way. No three ball. Holt going to hoist it from just inside. No good. And that will expire. So the defensive trickery that time from Coach Madlock and the South Carolina State Bulldogs take away a three-point opportunity and even a scoring opportunity there for high point. And the Bulldogs will head into the halftime locker room up by five, 35 to 30 here in our opening game of this No Room for Racism Classic here in Rock Hill. As we will send you to... Mike Glennon alongside Brock Bowling here inside this Rock Hill Sports and Events Center as the halftime lead was in favor of the South Carolina State Bulldogs halfway to their 70-point average here in 2021. But High Point starting to try to put something together at the end of that half. The shooting kind of fell by the wayside, Brock, for South Carolina State, but it was the defensive pressure that really stood out in that first half. Yeah, and... Even though they had good defensive pressure, they did allow John Michael Wright to score 13 first-half points. Shot altered underneath the hoop that time for Izunabor, and once away, once again, one and done here for South Carolina State. As the Bulldogs 
Shot well in that first half. Maybe not exactly the way they wanted to, but good enough to hold on to it. Count the bucket in the foul for Daquan Williams as he takes it right into the teeth of the defense. If you're going to let someone get inside that deep into the paint, that close to the basket, if you're going to foul him, make sure he misses the shot. Either foul him or don't foul him. If you're going to foul him, make it good. Not dirty, but just you know, make <laughs> sure. it good. Make it count, if you will. Williams looking for the old-fashioned three-point play. Again, the free throw shooting for both teams has been a bit of a woe this season. 68% for South Carolina State, 63% for High Point. Seven-point lead now, though, for the South Carolina State Bulldogs. One and one all-time is this series. Only two meetings in 2008 and 2009. Take to the bucket. Good up and under with the left hand that time by Bryant Randleman. As now South Carolina State will come back the other way. 37-32 here just a minute in to this second half as Edwards will dial it back just a little bit. A guy that didn't play a ton early going in the season. Now a high point takeaway. John Michael Wright gets it stuffed away by Daquan Williams and looking to push back the other way. Cameron Jones up and under can't get the layup to fall. And a good sequence that time. Thought they had the run out layup they wanted, but instead Cameron Jones, a good job by the defense to alter that shot ever so slightly and able to get it up and in. And now a whistle away from the ball. It'll be on Daquan Williams underneath the basket as he was battling with Izunabor. Both teams with the last couple of possessions getting up and down the floor, Mike. Absolutely. You gotta love the transition D, the transition O. High point inbound, down five. Looking to feed it in. They were looking at Zach Austin. John Michael Wright kind of yelling some orders at him here, saying, You gotta move back the other direction for me there, big guy. 18 and a half ball stays here with high point, just moves a little bit more towards the corner in this intimate but beautiful venue here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. The opening game of this No Room for Racism Classic. This is going to be an annual tournament that will bring in HBCUs. And just goes for an unbelievable cause here in 2021. As that one will go in for Austin and makes it 37-34. Back-to-back buckets here for the Panthers. And now over the back, nothing called there and taken in by the by the Bulldogs. Beautiful ball movement. Can't get the three to fall, though, in the corner. And a good box out by John Michael right there for high point. And he'll bring it back across the timeline. Looking at the last three games for high point, we talked about it shot 49% in those three wins. In the last four games. Meanwhile, a takeaway though for Edwards. Back the other way, tipped. Is it out of play? It is. And I will give credit to both transition defenses here for both these sides. They have done very well just getting that last second fingertip in there to tip away a ball or two. Yeah, turnover wise, the South Carolina State Mike had just four in the first half. High Point had eight in the first half. Uh, you don't want to get in a up and down game and turn the ball over if you're high point. Got to take care of the basketball. Possessions are going to be critical here in this game, especially down the stretch in a close game. High points turn the ball over just over 13 times a game so far here this season. Almost 15 a game for South Carolina State, but it has been that defensive pressure that has been the story in this one here for South Carolina State. Good on-ball defense. They did mix it up to a 2-3 in the last couple of seconds on that last possession. Nice little floater from the baseline, though. Good for Zach Austin, and it's a five-point game again. Yeah, Austin showing his versatility. Good offensive player. He can shoot the turnarounds. He can shoot inside, outside. Very versatile player for this high-point team. Beautiful one-handed dish and the two-handed stuff by Daquan Williams. The transfer from Lincoln University. Beautiful assist by Gary. He drove to the baseline, drew attenders or drew attention and defenders towards him, found the open man for the dunk. Williams has yet to miss from the floor, four of four, largely because he's taken nothing but high percentage shots, but either way, a big couple of points there again. And now another chance, three on two. Rakeem Gary pulls it up for three, leading three-point 
shooter on the team, and he pulls it up with confidence in transition, and it's back to six on a big shot. Yeah, just doubled the lead on one shot in transition. As South Carolina State had numbers, high point, tried to get back, but didn't defend the three very well, and the lead is back up to six. A little crossover dribble that time for John Michael Wright, but a tip down here to Gary. Up into the teeth of John Michael Wright goes T.J. Madlock. And Madlock will get the foul called. He'll go to the line for two, but it'll be our first media timeout here in the second half. Fourth, six point game here with 15.46 left to go in the second half, 42-36 in favor of the South Carolina State Bulldogs. We're back on ESPN Plus right after this. And kill. And we'll bring back Cadby and Cardi now here on the sideline. The first ever No Room for Racism Classic brings in college basketball teams from all around uh, the southeast and it brings in their fan bases but more importantly it brings in another special group uh, and your county uh, president uh, Billy Dunlap told me that special group is the YMCA of Northern Palmetto those guys those kids are here it's the after school group and they're here being able to enjoy this basketball game and this outreach program was something that Dunlap said hey we really want to be able to give these kids a great experience and have our tournament really be bigger than basketball and yeah, we thank you Kat for that it is a beautiful tournament that's for sure and uh, I will say the YNCA kids they got some dance moves was watching them during that halftime break absolutely two of two at the line there for TJ Madlock, and it's an eight point ball game here, 44 36, with 15 and a half left to play. South Carolina State, despite some shooting woes at the end of the first half, used the defensive pressure and have carried it over into this second half. But a good right hand that time underneath the basket for Alex Holt goes in and will keep it at six. But right now, South Carolina State keeping that arm's length lead here inside the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center. I can't emphasize, much, uh, emphasize enough, Mike, how much different looking this Bulldogs team is this year compared to last year. This team has made tremendous strides from a year ago. Brought in a lot of talent from the transfer portal. As you mentioned earlier, what team hasn't brought in a lot of talent from the transfer portal? But I, I can't keep up with even my favorite teams on who's playing where, who transferred away, who's still there, who's a six-year senior, who's a seventh-year yeah. senior. I mean, it's something we're all having to get used to here in 2021. Well, that's the funny thing. You mentioned it in terms of the eligibility. And you're not really sure who's a freshman or a sophomore or what that even means at this point in time. But at the same time, it's been a lot of fun to watch. And it looks like it will be a charge call. They were setting up for a couple of foul shots, but officials came together and had a conversation with it and ruled it a charge. I'm a diehard Kansas Jayhawk fan. All right. I think I can name maybe three players <laughs> on the team this year. I mean, it has been so confusing with everyone transferring in, transferring out, who's staying, who's going. I, I, I know three players on a team of like 15. Well, I'm a huge Carolina Tar Heels fan, and it's funny because I saw a high, score, high leading scorer the other night, and I said, who's that? <laughs> but, hey, everybody getting an opportunity no matter what color you're wearing. As High Point will have the ball, more full court pressure dialed up here from South Carolina State. Worked well in the first half. But they'll dial it off a little bit now here as the ball crosses midcourt with Zach Austin. Randomly will hand it off to Jaden House. First time we've seen him here today. He's played well so far here this season, but that ball stuffed out of play by Daquan Williams. But Jaden House coming in. 12.4 a game in terms of scoring, so another double-digit scorer. Just haven't seen him so far here tonight. This is a very well-coached South Carolina State team. Good help side defense by Williams, and now they get a steal on the inbounds play. Looking up ahead was Madlock. A little bit behind on the pass, but a step back three, no good. Offensive board there for Davis, and a foul from behind. will put him at the line for two. Another offensive board here for South Carolina State. And you know, both these teams have been out-rebounded by their uh, opposition so far here this year. I mean, granted, something's got to give in a ball game against each other, but the decided rebound advantage goes against opponents, I mean, goes in favor of opponents of South Carolina State. But here tonight, they've done a good job controlling the boards. Yeah, Mike, South Carolina State out-rebounding high points so far by four. 
but plus seven on the offensive glass. Ten to three. Ten offensive rebounds by South Carolina State in this game. That's just effort going after it, getting the basketball. And for high point, you got to box out. Got to box out. Put a body on a man and then go get the ball. First foul shot good for Davis. Second one good as well. Two of two at the line, and it's back to an eight-point ball game. It's been hovering around there. Never quite got to double digits so far here in the ball game. As high point going right to left here in this second half. And a carry called, a little hesitation for Zach Austin. And Jamal Davis loving every second of it on that on-ball defense. You might see that once a year, and that's our one time here tonight. <laughs> see, there you go. We got it out of the way. And, Mike, something I'm excited about this year, it's nice having fans back at the building again. Amen to that. I mean, those uh, cardboard cutouts last year at the arenas, it's all cute and all, but it's just not the same. And the pumped-in crowd noise, it's a lot different than actual crowd noise, oh, that's that for was, sure. That was distracting last year more <laughs> than anything. It started with the outdoor games and, of course, has trickled now inside. And a great turnout here for this Friday night ball game. Of course, a sellout in a 1,400-seat arena is expected for Sunday night's game between South Carolina and Florida State. A little SEC-ACC matchup here on ESPN. But here on ESPN Plus tonight, South Carolina State, who, might I say, has a pretty pr impressive contingent in the house. That is for sure uh, behind their bench here. They have such a great alumni base to South Carolina State, not just in this state of South Carolina, but all over the country. And a... Uh, a Beautiful alma mater to call your alma mater because they take care of you just as much as you take care of them. Cameron Jones back in the ball game here for the Bulldogs. He'll take the instruction from TJ Madlock as they swing it around the perimeter. But good defense here, man to man. Good slide though as Williams right there on a give and go. Little pick and roll, and he executes it perfectly. He actually, uh, it was a ghost screen. He went up to set his screen, slipped it. Faked everyone out, slid to the basket. Good pass inside and an easy two. And Williams, another one from the floor. Five of five now here for Daquan Williams. And it is a 10-point ball game for the first time here today. No good on the three there for high point, but still numbers on an offensive board of their own, and that will draw some contact from Williams. Kind of got left out to drive by the South Carolina State offense, going the other direction, but... You mentioned the boxing out on the high point side of things. That time they do a good job of getting just their fourth offensive board of the night. And for high point, uh, two guys right now carrying the offense for this team. John Michael Wright, obviously, 13 points. Austin, 11 points. High point needs a third score to get involved in this game if it wants to win this ball game. It's such a well-balanced scoring attack by South Carolina State so far tonight. You have Davis with 10, Williams with 10, Edwards has 9, Madlock with 7. A very well-rounded scoring attack here for South Carolina State. Just a two-man game so far for High Point. Referee kind of lost the ball there for his second. Second foul shot coming here for John Michael Wright. Made the first. Cuts it back to a nine-point ball game here with 13 minutes left to play in this second half. And Mike, uh, Mike, uh, John Michael Wright struggling, not really struggling, but laboring from the field as he knocks down the second free throw. He is 5 of 14 from the field overall, 1 of 5 on threes. Yet still he has 15 points in the game. Hit a couple of shots in a row, and then it's been a little sparing since that point. But 4 of 4 at the line now here with those two foul shots. And once again, it's an 8-point ball game, 48 to 40. As Cameron Jones looks to feed it in, beautiful dish, saw his open man, and you mentioned it, the man with the glasses, Edward Oliver Hampton, slips in behind the D, and an easy two points from the left side. And a high point went to a 2-1-2 zone that time, and somehow still inside, Oliver Hampton able to convert underneath. John Michael Wright got his defender in the air, but nothing set to go on a shot. Now Austin drives into the lane, fades back, kisses it off the glass, count the bucket and the foul. How did he make that? I do not know. That's a video game <laughs> shot on that one for sure. As the basket will indeed count. Coach Madlock didn't want it to, but doesn't matter. As that was just impressive, putting his uh, NBA 2K skills to, to bat on the floor tonight. There was nothing natural or normal <laughs> about that shot. I mean, I thought that had no chance of going in and somehow banked it in and draws the foul. And 
Having a good season so far. Redshirt freshman did not play last year. Sat out, averaging 14 points and seven rebounds a game in his redshirt freshman season. Also leads the team with 29 blocks on the season so far. Misses the and one opportunity after the impressive touch off the glass. As now TJ Madlock just explodes right in the lane. Thought about the shot, passed it off, gets blocked out of play. But it'd be a foul again, so trading buckets back in the other direction. As that'll be a foul on number two, Jaden House. The sophomore out of Richmond, Virginia. That'll be just his first. Again, didn't play in the first half, did House. Is scoring 12 and a half a game, just about five rebounds a game for him as well. Shooting over 50% from the floor on the season. Trying to ease his minutes into it here as just a sophomore. First one rattles out for Davis. Twelve eighteen to go here in this second half. An eight-point advantage. And really, it's been South Carolina State leading for the entirety pretty much of this game. It was a little back and forth in the early going, but since about five minutes into the ball game, South Carolina State has continued to sort of grow that lead just slightly. You know, earlier this season, South Carolina State played another Big South school, USC Upstate, and I've covered USC Upstate a lot over the years. And I talked to USC Upstate coach Dave Dickerson, and he, that team got a win at South Carolina State by four. 82-78 in November, and he said that was a good win for his team because he said this South Carolina State team is a vastly improved basketball program this year. Looking to challenge for a spot atop the MEAC here in 2021, and Coach Madlock here in his first season as a head coach has his guys playing some good basketball here in the month of December. And they have a nine-point lead now after the second foul shot was good. John Michael Wright, a pump fake, step back at the free throw line, and as time expires on the shot clock, almost another violation though, Brock, is that defense has definitely forced a few too many of those late shot clock uh, attempts there from John Michael Wright. And one back the other direction as it's Cameron Jones taking it to the bucket. No shot clock violations coming for South Carolina State tonight, that's for sure. You got to stop the ball, Mike, and nobody stops Cameron Jones. Had his way with the defense, went all the way to the rack and scored an easy two. And he got fouled. Well, he will go to the line for one more, looking to try to make it a double-digit lead again. 11-33 left to go here in Rock Hill. South Carolina State on top of High Point. We're back here on ESPN Plus right after this. Yeah. Oh. It's okay, everyone. Kick it down to the sideline here to Cat and Cardi. And we'll figure out her mic situation there. As a chance now at the free throw line here for Cameron Jones for the end one play. Fifty-three, forty-four, eleven, thirty-three left to go here in this second half, and the free throw is good for Cameron Jones, leading the team in scoring with just about twelve a game. By the way, I want to give a shout out to the entire Biancardi family. Uh, such a wonderful, beautiful family. I've worked with Paul Biancardi before. He's a total pro. We have Katarina Biancardi here tonight. She's a rising star in the business. She's always prepared. She's always. Has a good attitude, a good work ethic. Uh, shout out to the entire Biancardi family here tonight. And a shout out to Mr. Biancardi himself because uh, he is a very supportive father, that is for sure. Came out when we were doing the South Atlantic Conference for Division II, the conference tournament a couple of weeks ago for soccer. Came out and watched it. But she is definitely a rising star in this business, and we are fortunate enough to work with her tonight. And I'm fortunate enough to have her Working with us at the Queen Sports Network for the Queens University of Charlotte here this season. Long pass in, give it away. Rakeem Gary takes it away. Can't get the layup to go. Little frantic moment underneath the hoop that time, but somehow he just outran everybody and got away with that ball. So they'll reset it now with 10 seconds on the shot clock here as it didn't reset a full one. Rakeem Gary will drive in, gets caught up in the air. Two seconds now, Madlock will pull it off the front of the iron. Rebound kicking around, it's down to high point on a frantic little scramble. Now Jaden House drives in, off balance, layup no good. 
And both teams maybe just needing to settle down just a little bit, but Coach Madlock telling his team to get on back. Beautiful move by Gary. Pull-up jumper, no good. And trying to throw the ball in play, there was Zach Austin, and it says it's out of bounds off high point. It'll be back. I should say out of bounds off the Bulldogs. It'll stay with high point. But that was a dangerous play by Austin. It was clearly going out of bounds. He risked it and tried to save it anyway, even though it would have been high point basketball, and he got lucky there. That could have been uh, a continued possession for South Carolina State. Fortunately for high point, it goes back the other way. Ten and a half left to play here in this ball game, or I should say in regulation, a ten-point ball game right now for South Carolina State as it's been hovering between eight and ten here for pretty much the entirety of this second half thus far. High point trying to find a little run if they can. About a two-minute and 15-second scoring drought, though, for the Panthers. Each team with some scoring droughts throughout this game. Fortunately, though, for the South Carolina State Bulldogs, they've been able to weather it with some good defense. And now Alex Holt. Contact not called. Cameron Jones maybe a little bit of a flop on that one, but either way, misses the layup, does high point. And once again, they'll be stonewalled as now Cameron Jones back the other way and a kiss off the right side of the glass is good, 56-44. to 44. He's so athletic, and he can get to the basket. He can fade away. He can alter his shot. Uh, just not really much the defense can do right there to stop that kind of a shot from his game here tonight. South Carolina State with their largest lead on the night at 12 points. Looking to make it two in a row for the first time here this season. You mentioned it earlier, Brock. Just one win a season ago, 1-17. They had 11 wins back in 2019-2020. As Williams gets pushed from behind, count the bucket in the foul again. Dacon Williams stays perfect from the field at 6-6 six of six now, and he'll go to the line for one more. South Carolina State just winning the, the hustle plays, the... The grinding plays inside, creating contact. Uh, they're outboarding high point here so far tonight, especially on the offensive glass. So right now, offensive rebounds, 11-4 in favor of South Carolina State, 28-22 in overall rebounds. Uh, but how about Deshaun, uh, Daquan Williams, I should say, 6A graduate student transfer from Camden, New Jersey. 12 points so far tonight. He came in, Mike, averaging six for an entire game this season. He's already doubled his points here tonight compared to his average of six points a game. John Michael Wright will pass it to the corner. A little step back opportunity there for Austin. Takes it the second time, but shorts it. Might have got contacted on that ball by Jamal Davis. And back the other way come the Bulldogs. Jones gets caught up down on that baseline and just kind of throws it away. And now good ball movement. John Michael Wright takes it to the hoop. Gets it blocked, but he also gets contact foul called, and he'll go to the line here for a pair with 9.01 left to go in the game. 58-44, though. They need these free throws here from right. And you talked about the beautiful ball movement up the floor. That ball hardly hit the floor on that fast break opportunity. Kind of hard to stop the ball, but it's always in the air. And uh, John Michael Wright, Mikey, looks tired. He has been laboring for shots all night. 17 points, a good night so far, but he's 6 of 16 from the floor. Players have been keying in on him, and he's one for five on threes. Well, South Carolina State, besides the five points now at the free throw line, has made him earn every single ounce of those points here on the evening. As now Williams will get a much-deserved breather here as Krosky will check back in for the Bulldogs. On top by 13 still with 9.01. Second free throw coming here from John Michael Wright. And the Fayetteville, North Carolina native goes two of two at the line. Now six of six on the evening. But they need somebody else to step up on the scoring side of things, Brock, like you alluded to before. Nine minutes left to go here in the game, and it's Bulldogs basketball. Krosky swings it around the top of the perimeter there to Edwards, who will take a screen from Oliver Hampton. Trying to go back door to him, but nothing there. Right, a long layup coming from Zach Austin. Two steps from just inside the three-point line. Got it in. As now quickly back the other way, they'll grab those two bet points back. And a lay-in with the left hand that time for Krosky. And so that will send us to a break here. 
You're watching ESPN Plus, 60 to 48 in favor of South Carolina State, trying to make it two in, two in a row for the first time here in 2021. We're back right after this. The line at merciless. And now it's time to be ruthless. That's as they try to slow down uh, South Carolina State fast in transition place pace of basketball. That's what High Point coaching staff told me, that they have to slow down the ball in terms of transition and then make sure that they do a better job of making their shots when it's their time to shoot the rock. Well, they got eight minutes and 20 seconds here, Brock, to try to make a comeback, albeit a pretty stout one. Down by 12, right to the house goes Jaden House, and he'll play it in. And he'll get a pair. That's what they dialed up out of that timeout. And, well, they got it to work. And that should be a takeaway now for High Point, ratcheting up the pressure a little bit here out of that timeout as well. And, you know, you mentioned it. Coach Smith, of course, has had 636 wins. And he's the uh, he has had to come up with a couple of second-half adjustments in his time. Yeah. And he's coaching at his alma mater. I talked to him about that in recent years. He says it's been very gratifying to be able to coach at a place he loves where his playing career started. He's coached all over the place in the country. Now likely will finish his career here at High Point, his alma mater. He's having a great time. And they just built that brand new beautiful facility up oh, there yeah. in High Point. And so a gorgeous new facility for Coach Tubby Smith in his fourth season here. As Zach Austin off balance, can't get it to fall, tipped up and around as it pinballs its way around. Now up the floor to Krosky on a run out, blocked from behind, but House is called from the foul as Krosky kind of slowed it down. Maybe would have want to see him go up with the right off the glass there. Got to get back on defense in transition if you're high point. You can't give up easy points. They got lucky there that the, a foul was called, but now South Carolina State going to go to the line. Chance for some free points. Well, they'll go to the line after this media timeout. South Carolina State on top by 10, looking to push that lead back up to 12 when we get back here on ESPN Plus right after this. Teams at the start to two champions at the finish, all in one venue. It's the 2022 Hercules Tires Big South Basketball Championships at Charlotte's Bojangles Coliseum. Tickets and events information can be found now at BigSouthSports.com slash CLT Champs. Make plans to come support your team in Charlotte March 1st through the 6th as two shots at the line. Now here for Krosky of the Bulldogs and we'll send it once more down to Cadby and Cardi. State. One thing that Coach Madlock emphasizes, hey, we have to complete this game. And that's been something since he took on that position uh, as head coach in his first season here, that complete, let's com be complete with everything that we do. And with these last uh, seven and a half minutes, let's be complete with our job here. Well, two of two at the line that time there for the South Carolina State Bulldogs. And, you know, we talked about it early in this game, and it's really stayed true throughout, Brock. They have played a complete ball game, both offensively and defensively. As now the ball will transfer its way around to John Michael Wright. Randleman had it, almost lost it, and now Jaden House helps him out. Eight seconds to go, deep three heaved up from Wright. Not the shot I think he wanted to take, but a foul called on the floor. And that'll be a foul on Davis. And I believe that'll be one and one now. Yes, it will. So Zach Austin will head to the line here for a front half of a one and one. And luckily for High Point, it will stop the clock as well with exactly seven to go. I've been impressed with Austin tonight. Very athletic. He can create his own shot. Super fast. Runs the floor well. It's amazing. It's amazing this guy sat out last year. I think yeah, he probably could have been a good contributor to this team. A year ago, but now a year wiser, a year older, more experienced. Redshirt freshman still has three more years to go after this one. Let's see, with the new eligibility rules, probably has ten more years of eligibility yeah, now, yeah, right? probably. As second one off the front of the iron rattles its way in, two of two of the line, and is back to ten. Full court pressure coming here and a timeout as they trapped him up in the corner. Rakeem Gary had to call the timeout. As it'll be... A 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here courtside with you inside the Rock Hill Sports and Events Center. And a quick shout-out to Visit York County 
as they are the ones that have put this tournament on. It's a fun tournament as they bring out the YMCA kids and just more importantly, just bring in some college basketball here to Rock Hill, of course, right down the road. The Carolina Panthers building their big new practice facility. So Rock Hill trying to become a little bit of a destination when it comes to sports. And a big tournament like this will be a lot of fun for years to come. High Point, South Carolina State tonight. Winthrop versus Carver coming on tomorrow. And then on Sunday, South Carolina versus Florida State. That one's going to be a packed house with just 1,400 seats here in attendance. I like this arena. It's, uh, it's nice. It's intimate. Not too big, not too small. Just right. How many does it hold? 1,400. Uh, it looks like uh, maybe a little more than that, but I'll, I'll trust you. Word for it, 1,400. I don't think that includes standing room only, though. Okay, okay. And behind us, there's 16 basketball courts. A lot of AAU tournaments and stuff have happened here as well. But this is the first collegiate tournament of any kind. And we also want to thank Visit York County for feeding us as well as we'll send it down to Cat B and Cardi there on the sideline. Inside that high point huddle, Coach Tubby Smith urged his team, continue pressing, good things will happen. The game is not too far away for the 10 point deficit for these Panthers. Mike? And the way these two teams can get up and down the floor, she's not wrong. This could very well be a good play here for high point as another whistle will go in their favor as an illegal screen called there against South Carolina State. Yeah, still a lot of time left, Mike. 6.41 to go. High Point needs to make shots, play good defense. It doesn't have to necessarily play perfectly the rest of the way, but it needs to make shots, get some stops on defense. You can't trade baskets the rest of the way against this Bulldogs team here tonight. Jaden House finds it through the fingers of Peterson, but right luckily into the hands of Bryant Randleman, so it stays here with the Panthers. 16 seconds left to go on the shot clock. Madlock, one-on-one -on -one defense with Wright. Wright goes around him and floats it in. Beautiful shot with a right hand that time as it finds its way in, and it's back to single digits for the first time here in a couple minutes. That'll be a confidence booster. Again, inside of single digits, plenty of time to go, six minutes. But right back the other way, a little touch pass from Madlock Jr. and a two-hand and a two -hand hammer for Oliver Hampton. And they'll get those two points right back. So that stops any sort of comeback there for a moment. Deep three coming from right, trying to follow his own shot. Not there. Peterson comes up with the offensive board off the right side and in. So High Point doing a good job dialing up the offensive rebounding here in this second half. Unfortunately, hasn't translated. Now a takeaway on the defensive side. That trap has really started to work its magic here for Coach Tubby Smith and this High Point Panther team. Not only a stop, but a turnover. Only an eight-point game. 5.17 left to go here in the ball game. House going to pull it for three. And too far off the left side, out of bounds, out of play. And it'll be back over to South Carolina State. House wanted a tipped ball call, but nothing was. And so a couple of guys will head off the floor as Edwards and Cameron Jones will check back in here for the Bulldogs. 64-56, 5-12 to go here in the ballgame. Full court pressure once again here for High Point. Broken pretty easily there by Edwards and the Bulldogs, and so now Edwards will bring it back out up top and run the point. From Charleston, West Virginia, is Edwards as he gives it down underneath, and I think... Yes, it was. A little right arm clearance moved. Used that time by Daquan Williams. One of the rare mistakes we've seen from him here tonight. Another stop by High Point. Still under 10 uh, single digits here in the second half. 4.53 to go. Plenty of time to go here, Mike. They just got to make shots, continue to get stops. They've got some stops, but shots have been hard to come by tonight. High Point shooting uh, just 41% overall. And uh, South Carolina State... A little bit better, shooting 46%. Well, just to make a note, we're now tied in the turnover battle. 13 apiece here for both sides. For a majority of this game, it's been in the single digits for South Carolina State, but really since that pressure defense has started to ratchet up here for High Point, it has created some problems in the ball handling category. John Michael Wright takes a big screen on the far side, mismatch with a defender. Fade back, too short, two seconds left. Tip no good for the first time. Hangs on the rim and falls in for Peterson. 
As that took a little bit longer than they wanted it to, that's for sure. Down to six, and here comes the full court press. Pressure again, and a foul called. They wanted to travel on Edwards, but indeed it was a foul called on a push. As I think Bryant Randleman is the one whistled for it, and now more critical than that, that will put South Carolina State on the line for the last four minutes and 12 seconds of the game from here on out. A lot of contact in the play. It looked like Edwards was trying to split the defense and looked like he did. But then a late foul was called right after the pass was made. So I'm not sure if it's just a late whistle or a late decision. On the call, not sure. Either way, Edwards will hit the front end of the one and one. So they'll have one more here. Back to seven goes the lead, 65-58, 4-12 to go here in the ball game. That one rattles around and out. And down into the hands here of John Michael Wright. It's a seven-point game. And now that backcourt defense pressure again. Izunabor had an open chance at a layup, but that ball came off of the hands of Wright with some serious heat to it and got out of his grasp. As now almost thrown away there by Peterson. Instead, with 10 seconds, John Michael Wright will back it back out. Round the back he goes, up and under. Right hand is good. Count the bucket and the foul. And a big three-point play coming here for John Michael Wright. But we will have to wait till after the media timeout. A little sidestep by Wright gets him up and under and in. Kisses it off that top right corner of the glass, and he'll go to the line for one more in a five-point ball game, folks. Don't go anywhere as we, this one just got interesting. We're back here on ESPN Plus right after this. And improving enter. And these last four minutes, Coach Maddox emphasized to his team, guys, we have plenty of time. While High Point cut the deficit to a two-possession game, he said, complete. That's the focus that we have to focus on our team is completing this game. Mike? Appreciate it, Kat. Doing a fantastic job down there for us on the sidelines is Cad Biancardi. Mike Lennon alongside Brock Bowling here on this Friday night of action. And it's a four-point game now as John Michael Wright will complete the three-point play the old-fashioned way. And back the other direction here come the Bulldogs. And almost a travel or a five-second call. Instead, they'll kick it out and around to that far left side. As Edwards will pull it out with 11 on the shot clock. He'll dribble in, pull up, jump shot, fouled on the shot. As it rattled out, would have been a rebound for a high point, but instead it'll be two shots at the line here for Rasan Edwards. And just a tough foul to go against Zach Austin. So a two-possession game, clock stopped. High points hoping for... Some missed free throws. Still plenty of time to go. 3.22 to go. Still just a two-possession game even after that made free throw. If you're high point, continue to run your stuff. Believe in yourselves. Believe in your coach and what he's telling you. I mean, 3.22, Mike, in a two-possession game, that's an eternity. Absolutely. And for a team like High Point that has shot the ball just under 40% from three here this season, that can change on a dime in a hurry. Second one good, though, so doing what he needed to do at the line there was Edwards, two of two, and now the full-court pressure back at it. But as soon as they inbound the ball, everybody getting back on defense here for the Bulldogs. Randomman will dribble underneath the legs, switches the side of the court to right, who's looking for Izunabor. Haven't called his name in a while. Was right there in the thick of things early going, looking to go to work on that right side, can't get it. Offensive board, though, is there. Shot clock down to nine, though. And ball didn't touch the rim, but. So a whistle there stops play. It'll remain a six second count on the shot clock with 2.54 to go. High point's gonna have to do something. As uh, the deep coaching staff here of Tony Madlock are telling them just to keep it down just a little bit over there on that sideline for right now. Three seconds to go. Randleman takes it in, floats it up off the back of the iron, no good. John Michael Wright with the offensive rebound can't get it to go. And South Carolina State will push it up and take away any pressure defense setting up for high point. Yeah, look for South Carolina State to use some clock, if not the entire shot clock here on this possession. A full two possession game, two and a half to go. The clock is high point's enemy, South Carolina State's friend. 
No field goals from the floor for South Carolina State in over three and a half minutes, but they still have a six-point advantage. Cameron Jones takes it in, gets it blocked away, but it comes off the hands of Peterson. Shot clock violation, though, as that ball just kind of remained in the air, was unable to get a second chance at it. So high point gets a stop. Still a two-possession game, plenty of time to go, 2.13 to go. Got to run your stuff. If you have an open shot, and if it's Michael, John Michael Wright, take it. If not, run some good offense, get a good shot to try and chip away at this lead some more. Randleman hands it off. Wright gets fouled, and he will go to the line, so it'll stop the clock at 2.08. And we'll put John Michael Wright at the line here for a one-and-one one still. And not to put the broadcaster jinx on him, but he is perfect at the line here tonight. Sometimes we jinx, sometimes not. <laughs> sometimes we help, at least that's what I like I've, to think. I've know? been uh, guilty of both. But can he free throws when he's tired? He looks winded out there, oh, no problem. Nine of 23 from the field. As you look at the rest of his team, they have 25 shot, 22 shots combined for the rest of the team. 23 from the field here for John Michael Wright. Still perfect at the line, though, and it's back to a two-possession game. Or I should say remains a two-possession game at four points right now, 67-63. But a turnover here from South Carolina State off the inbound, and no time comes off the clock, more importantly. Holt trying to lead a comeback here. His team is trailed by as many as 12 in the ballgame. Has this high point team. As John Michael Wright will be the one to inbound it. Trying to get him to run off a screen here. As now it's Zach Austin the other way. Three ball is good. And it's a one point ball game with two minutes to go. Coach Smith comes firing off the bench. Hollering out defensive cues as now Cameron Jones with a one-point game will have to slow it up and South Carolina State going to have to dig deep and run their own offense. High point fans coming alive. Edwards caught up in the lane, got caught up in the air, gave it back to Madlock. Five on the shot clock, floater no good, pushing the back, and that's going to send him to the line is Peterson. And so not only is it a big time foul, it is a two shot foul in the double bonus and a chance for Peterson to give High Point the lead for the first time since about five minutes into the game. Mike, this team was down 10 points not too long ago, just a couple of minutes ago. Now it's only down one chance to take the lead. And a pretty good free throw shooter and Rob Peterson going to the line to shoot two. Peterson rattles it around off on the first. Still a chance to tie it here at 67 with 90, with 126, I should say, left to go here on the game clock. And what has turned out to be a bit of a thriller here to open up the No Room for Racism Classic here in 2021, the inaugural No Room for Racism Classic right here in Rock Hill. And, of course, the slogan, bigger than basketball, and putting on a show here tonight. There are both these teams. Offensive board is good for High Point on two missed free throws and a chance now to still take the lead here for the High Point Panthers. And that was just some tired legs it looked like is almost a fairly easy rebound that time for Zach Austin. And a timeout, a full timeout being called on this offensive possession. As we'll keep it here and Brock, 116 left to go. No rush whatsoever offensively if you're high point. Even on a missed shot, you don't need to get crazy with it. You just need to run the offense that obviously has gotten you back into this game. But keep in mind, 11 on the shot clock, so they have to hurry a little bit, but not too much. 11 to shoot. I got to think it's going to be in Mike, John Michael Wright's hands. He's been carrying this team all night. He's been the leader of this team. He's had to labor for every shot he's had. Either look for him or find that second option, try and catch South Carolina State off guard, off balance, because you know South Carolina State is going to focus in on number one in John Michael Wright. One sixteen to go here on the game clock. 
As we'll bring in Cat and Cardi now once more. When you look at this game, guys, it went from a 14-point lead by uh, South Carolina State down to just a one-point lead. And the name of the game right now is making sure that this te both teams are trying to press hard and create chaos so that the other team has an opportunity to be able to score in transition. But I gotta tell you, I know High Point's coaching staff is pretty pleased with John Michael Wright, who has, once again, another 20-point game. 25 points so far in the night, and there's another minute and a half, minute 15 left, and I know they're gonna rely on him to hopefully close this game out. Well, let's see if they go to him here. 11 seconds on the shot clock, as Brock alluded to, coming out of this timeout. 1.15 to go, and a chance to regain the lead for the first time in quite some time here for the Panthers. Double team and right as now Randleman going to have to drive in. He throws a wild one up again. He is fouled. Both guys look like they slipped on a little bit of sweat, but unfortunately for Edwards, the foul going to be called against him, stopping the clock and putting Randleman on the line. With two on the shot clock, they fouled him. They almost stopped High Point on that possession. Now again, two shots coming up for Randleman, and High Point chance to take the lead. This game has not been pretty for High Point tonight, Mike, but it's found a way to get back into this game. It's been fighting, scrapping, clawing. It's made some big plays. Now a chance for two free throws to try and take the lead. Looking for their first three-game win streak on the season. South Carolina State looking for their first back-to-back -back wins here in the new campaign as well. Just nine games in. This is the tenth game for both teams. Five and four for High Point on the season thus far. Two and seven for the South Carolina State Bulldogs, but free throw line not treating the High Point Panthers very well right now. Again, a team that shoots 63%, so not a guarantee. A couple of points at the line here for this Panthers team. Second one miss as well. Four straight free throws now have been missed by the Panthers, and South Carolina State will cling to that one-point lead, and they'll have possession as we go under a minute to play. Rakeem Gary has the ball here for the Bulldogs. Guarded by right out up top. They're looking for Daquan Williams down there on that low block. Perfect from the field here is Williams. Little turnaround on Izuna Bohr. No good. Rebound taken in. And it stays here with South Carolina State. 20 seconds back on the shot clock on the reset. Edwards now dribbles right side. Floats it up, blocked out of play by Austin, and it'll stay here with five seconds. As South Carolina State wanted a goaltend, thought it was coming down, but instead it's sent out of play, and it'll be out of bounds underneath the basket here with five on the shot clock for TJ Madlock. Into Edwards, pull up jumper from the corner, no good. Peterson with a rebound here for high point. And with 20 seconds, a chance for the final shot and a game winner for John Michael Wright as Tubby Smith wants a timeout for High Point to have a conversation here. It'll be a 30-second timeout, but we've mentioned it time and time again. It's no secret they're going to try to get John Michael Wright the ball. However, Coach Madlock has done a great job dialing up defensive pressure out of these timeouts and really has been a rarity to get it to John Michael Wright because he's more or less double teamed out of these timeouts. And i got to wonder... If Coach Smith, he's either going to draw up a play for John Michael Reich in an ISO situation, let him create, try and make a shot, or do you use John Michael Wright as a decoy, draw the attention to him, and then give the ball to someone else to make the play? He's a guy that's won 600-plus games in his career. He's practiced these kind of plays in practice, and he's drawn up these plays in games his whole career. Look for an interesting play call here tonight to try and win the game here. Down one, 14.4 to go. The Fayetteville, North Carolina native stayed home for his collegiate career. Going to high point. And now with a chance to the Panthers to win the ball game with 14.4 seconds on the clock. Does South Carolina State have one final defensive stand in the tank? The defense is the reason they have been in the lead for the pretty much the entirety of the ball game, but a chance to win it now for high point. Zach Austin to inbound right next to his head coach, Tubby Smith. And a kicked ball off that one. Clock ran there for a second as it kept running after the whistle blew. So 
A full 1.4 coming off the clock. Everybody on the high point sideline noticing it as well and uh, having the referee talk about it. And no replay here for the tournament, so it's one of those things that not really much they can go to in terms of a monitor, so it's kind of at the referee's discretion at this point. They might take a couple of tenths off the clock, maybe. And it looks like it will actually stay at 13 seconds exactly here. Wow. Still looking to inbound the ball. Oh, that, so Now it's 14. Okay, they did put a .6 back on the clock at 14. Ball inbounded to Randleman. Peterson looking to feed it inside. Nothing there with Austin. Still nothing for Peterson. Now Austin a chance with five seconds. John Michael Wright going to have to hoist it from the baseline. Jumper, no good. And the ball down. South Carolina State will hold on for the victory, albeit a tight one more than they thought, but the second consecutive one-point victory for this South Carolina State team. And they stand tall defensively once again on a very fun ball game. And Coach Madlock getting his fans involved, loving to see what he sees from his team so far. You mentioned it, Brock, a much improved South Carolina State team. Already three wins this year. They had one all of last year. One and 17 last year, three and seven so far this year. And high points, as we predicted, went to John Michael Wright down the stretch. Had a good look at a shot, did not go in, and South Carolina State hangs on to win by a point. Well, we appreciate you joining us here on ESPN Plus on this Friday night to open up the No Room for Racism tournament here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. It's the South Carolina team getting the victory here on the night as they take down the High Point Panthers. South Carolina State Bulldogs will move to three and seven now on the year, two in a row for the first time here in 2021. And meanwhile, High Point will move to 500 now at five and five on the season. As we look like we will have a chance to talk to TJ Madlock here with Cadby and Cardi as we'll wait for them to get up there onto the sideline for us. But either way, TJ Madlock and his dad will have a conversation with us, but largely because they had had an unbelievable night here in terms of defense. And Brock, what can you say about that full court pressure early on in the game that has led to what a victory ultimately here for this South Carolina State Bulldogs team? It caused some problems early on, and uh, High Point did a decent job of adjusting to it uh, at different stages in the game. But uh, like we've said, this is a vastly improved South Carolina State program. Amazing what can happen with a new voice, a new coach, new leadership, not to mention some new players that are on the team this year that have uh, really tried to change and build up the culture and build up a winning culture at South Carolina State. Some good play overall tonight, good plays down the stretch as South Carolina State hangs on and wins it by a point. Well, we appreciate you joining us here on this Friday night. South Carolina State taking down the High Point Panthers.